Hey guys, in today's video, we're going over how to program DMX lighting. So this is going to be used for programming any light that's mostly used for, you know, concerts and stuff like that. Anything that accepts a DMX input, and you can find that out by looking on the back of most lights, you'll see a DMX input and output. And if you see those, you'll be able to program these lights. This is going to be a basic, very beginner guide to this. I'm assuming if you know little or nothing about how to program lights, this video is going to be for you. And I'm going to walk you through basically all the steps to get you started. So with this one, I'm just going to be demoing this with just two little par lights, simple to use Chave lights. But the knowledge that you get from this video, you'll be able to use it to program any light in the future. So it doesn't really matter what program you use or what lights you're using. This knowledge from this video is basically going to give you the info that you need in order to program lights. So before I get started, I post videos like this all the time, stuff on gear for musicians, programming, MIDI, wireless, in your monitors, lighting, stuff like that. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when I put out new videos. And if you found this content helpful, hitting the like button is a free way to support the channel. All right, let's go ahead and get started with programming lights. Lights communicate by DMX. That is the signal that they get. So DMX can go from one to 512. That's the number that you have to know for this. You can set up different universes and stuff like that where you can get more. But for right now, just for basics, you can DMX goes from one to 512. Each of those channels can send signal to different lights. If that doesn't make sense yet, it's going to make sense in a minute. Okay, so first of all, this idea is going to work with anything that accepts a DMX input. What you're going to find is every input is going to have either a three pin or a five pin DMX input. All of the lights that I'm using are going to be three pin, but they do have five pin ones as well. So just keep that in mind. They have adapters and specific cables for them. So what you're going to do is come out of your controller and I'll show you the controller here in a minute, but it can be, you know, basically any type of lighting controller. It's going to come out of the controller and it's going to go in to the DMX in of the light that you're trying to control. So this is plugged into my controller and it's going into the first input on the Chave easy par right here. Something just to keep in mind is if they are the three pin ones, you can actually just use a standard XLR cable. That's what I'm using for this. There is debate about that between people. Some people say you have to use a DMX cable. Other ones say you can use XLR. I've used both and I haven't had problems with it. I do have DMX cables that I do use, but I'll post links down below to DMX cables if you do want to get them. And then here's the next light that I want to control. Same thing. It's the next light. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to go almost every light. They have the DMX out right here. So I'm going to DMX out into the DMX in here. So I have gone from my controller, which is this white cable right here, into this first light. And then I'm passing through that signal, passing through more DMX signal into this next one over here. And I can keep daisy chaining them as much as I would like. But just FYI, I have, I did a whole nother video on these guys right here. These are wireless DMX adapters. So I don't even need to daisy chain with these. What I can actually do is it goes, there's a transmitter that comes out. There's a little antenna that comes out of my controller. So that's the transmitter. And then it sends a signal to every single one of these. So I don't have to worry about daisy chaining. I did a whole nother video about that. I highly recommend these. These things are awesome and they're great time savers. Just letting you know that there is a wireless option as well. No surprise with how much I love wireless on my channel. And so I'm going to turn this light on. And what I'm going to do is you can scroll through it and you know, you have different lighting settings what you do for this one is it'll say four channel or eight channel. Can you even see that? Hang on. Okay. So four channel or eight channel. So just know that I have two different options in here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to four channel for right now. And what's going to give me, it's going to have D and it's going to give me a, a number, but I'm going to set this to D one. So this is going to start on channel one. You're going to have to look at your manual to see like what every light does. For this one, when it's set to four channel mode, the first channel is going to control the reds. Second one is going to control green. Next one is going to control blue. And then the next one is going to control the amber lights. That's what this light does. So if I set this to D1, that means anything set on DMX channel one is going to control the reds in this light. Channel two is going to control the greens three is going to control the blues and four is going to control the ambers, right? On one, two, three, and four. That's where we're at right now. If I change this, so I had, when I turned this on, it was set to 33, which is how I use this for my live shows. Now, channel 33, DMX is 33, is going to control the reds. 34 is going to control the greens. 
35 is going to control the blues, and 36 is going to control the amber colors. I'm going to set it back to number one. So when I move up fader one, it changes, it brings up the reds. When I move up fader two, it brings up the greens. Three brings up the blues, and four brings up the ambers. Does that make sense? So now on my second light, I'm also going to go through here. I'm going to set this to four channel mode and 41 is normally what I have it set to. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this down to five. This is my starting address. What address is this going to start on? So on channel five now, five is going to control the reds of this light. Six is going to control the greens. Seven is going to control the blues. Eight is going to control the amber. So this one, if I want to control the reds, I'm going to move fader one. If I want to control the reds on this one, I'm going to move fader five. So basically what you do is you set what is your starting address. And actually in this one, and it depends. So like I said, this one has the option of I can do four channel mode or eight channel mode. And you can see, you know, here's from the manual. So four channels just controls red, green, blue, and amber. And then with eight channel mode, you get controls over like the master, dimmer, strobe, different presets and stuff like that. So you'll just have to look and see what yours control in the manual. But I, I'm gonna, for the sake of this demo, I'm just doing four channel. So you don't want to, so if I set this to four by accident, so now fader four would control the ambers in this light and the reds in this light. I don't want that. I want separate control over these lights. Make sense? That's why this one's set on one and this one's set on five. So here's DMXs that I have loaded up. This is the software that I'm gonna use for this. It's a digital one, but the same thing can be done with like a physical one as well. But you know, here's channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way, you know, and I can scroll over all the way to 512 because that's how far DMX goes the DMX signal goes so watch what happens when I move fader one See how the reds turn on on that first light bring it down next one is greens on that first light blues and Ambers don't worry about what it says here That's just a setting that I haven't changed on here, but it's red green blue and amber So and then the farther up you go So if I put on just a tiny bit you get a tiny bit of red you probably can't even really see that there's a little bit more, tiny bit more, tiny bit more, all the way up to 100%, which gives me full red. Now, this is where DMXS is a little bit different. It measures from 0 to 100, but most of the time lighting, as far as, you know, from 0 to 100%, is rated from 0 to 255. So on fader 1, sending a signal of 0 sends nothing. Sending a signal of 255 on channel 1 is full strength. So DMXS is a little bit different like that, but most lighting for DMX is measured from zero to 255, just FYI. And I can do, you know, multiple colors. So red and blue give me kind of like a pinkish purplish color and stuff like that. But then on channel five, if I start moving that, that's what controls the next light. So now here's some reds on the second light, greens on the second light, blues on the second light, and ambers on the second light, right? So let's say I want this one to be red and this one to be green. There you go. Now you have the Christmas lights, right? Or what if I want like just amber and blue and green and so on and so forth. So that's how you start programming just kind of the simple lights. If I did want these to read the same, if I did want these to be the same, so I just set this second light to read on DMX starting on channel one, and now they'll be together. So now this, this controls both lights. They'll both be red. They'll both be green, both be blue and both be amber. So if you want the two lights to do the exact same thing, you can set them to the same DMX starting address. But for the sake of this video, I'm setting it back to one and five. So that's how you control like basic lighting. So you can turn on, you know, reds and greens and stuff like that. It's not that exciting though. You most of the time you want some sort of movement. So this is where you get an oscillator. Now some of them can, they can be called different things sometimes. In DMX, this is called oscillator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select both of the red light. So both of the red lights on each of the lights right here. So I'm just going to control the reds. So right down here, you have the oscillator. So I have different types of oscillators. So the sine wave, so it'll move up in the shape of a sine wave. You have a square where it's just up and down, up, down, so it kind of blinks. You have a triangle, which is a slightly different shape. So it's down longer than it is up saw up and then drops. So it goes slowly rises and then drops or saw down where it up it jumps up and then slowly drops down, right? So I'm just gonna go to a, a, a sine wave, which is a kind of a more of a smooth one. And I'm gonna choose the amount. So how far do I want it to go up? 
I want it to go all the way up 100%. So it goes from completely lit up to not lit up or kind of just a tiny bit, just blinking a tiny bit. I can, so I'm going to go to full just so to make it easier to see the speed. How fast do I want it to do? So, you know, every quarter note, I can change the, the BPM right here. So now it's at 80 beats per minute or, you know, 155 beats per minute and stuff like that. And this does sync up with like Logic and Ableton, which is what's really cool about this software. Let me do it a little bit slower. So like every three bars, it'll go up and it'll go down. And then you can choose the shape as well. So in DMX's shape, just basically less of a shape means that it drops faster, but then a higher shape means that, watch it move. Yeah, it jumps up faster and then goes slower. So shape is just a way to change the type of the oscillator. So again, uh, if I set that to like a square, that'll make it jump up and then go immediately down. So every two bars, it'll be off or on, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to off. I'm gonna go to the blue lights now. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set up just a square oscillator and going all the way up. So that's how you do an oscillator. So turn them on or turn them off. Now chase is really cool. So when I set chase, you'll see that they'll move slightly different. Let me actually set it back to a sine wave. So you can see that the second one and the first one kind of move, they don't just go together, they chase. So they'll, you know, and you mess with like the shape. So now it's like, if I put it up at exactly one and one, it'll go, one goes on, and then the next one goes on and stuff like that. So this can actually be really useful for doing like uh, all of them. So watch this. So when I do sine wave, oh, let me reset this back really quick. So now if I set the chase, see how they move like this? So, I mean, that's a quite a different light show for sure. You can see how much the lights are doing. So setting it down like this is a way to get it to go, you know, kind of from right to left. So it'll be bring in ambers, blues, and in different colors in that order. And then if I set it this way, it does it the opposite way. So it starts from the left and moves to the right. So a chase is to get the lights to kind of chase each other, if that makes sense. I don't really know how to explain it except visually that, I mean, if you just see what that does, if the chase is off, they just move up and down together in whatever way you have it set, whether it's a sine wave or a, or a square wave, right? So now all the lights just turn on or off, which can be valuable if that's what you're going for. But if you want it to chase, you know, they kind of move. I mean, the visual is what makes the most sense. So no chase, have them just move exactly together. Chase, have them kind of chase each other or go, you know, kind of in order of where the lights are, if that makes any sense. So there you go. So that's how you do a chase and an oscillate which is definitely more valuable to know. Okay, so now you, you do want to know how to save scenes. I wish they didn't discontinue DMX. This is such a good software. I did a whole video explaining how to use this software. If you are able to get it, I still recommend it. It's a great system. But um, you go to this preset manager, and then here you have your banks. So I have these saved per every song. That's the way that I have these. So this is when I perform perform my song immersion. Here's wake and walk and stuff like that. And then, so I have a blackout preset. So when I load this preset, everything is off. So I mean, I have a ton of lights with this with this show. So this will be more than just the two lights. But and, but then when I hit sound check, when I load this one, what I have it set is that everything oscillates blue. So you can see that my lights are os are moving in blue right now. So the blues turn on and turn off. So I know if like one of my lights isn't blue, that means something is set up wrong. If they're blinking you know, green or something like that, then I have the channel set incorrectly, right? So what you do is you just, you program, you know, whatever you want the lights to do. So you can see on different pages, I have all these lights going. So I have all these blues going right here. And then I hit, you know, you just save it as, as that preset. Now here's blackout, which is everything is off. And again, every single program is going to be a little bit different. That's just how you do it in DMXs. If you want, if you wanted to, you could make something like a, a red wash. So you could save, you know, you can do, here's all the reds and you could save this as red wash or something like that. Right. And then you could save like red and green and you can go into your preset manager and you would save this as, you know, Christmas or something like that. And then you would just click it in order to load it. Every software is different. That's just the way that it's done in DMXs. So just keep in mind that it is with digital, it's really nice that you can save scenes and load them very easily. Again, if you want to see my DMXs tutorial, I did a whole tutorial about how to use this software. Okay, so that's basically it. So again, remember, I just did this with just two different lights. Once you go through a manual and just start messing around with the lights, you'll be able to see what the lights do, you know? So if there's a strobe, you know, you bring up the fader and it starts strobing more. If you find a mover, you know, it'll usually be like, 
uh, forward and backwards and then tilting left and right. So the more you move the fader up, it'll tilt left or tilt right. And you just have to look at the manual. Remember what I taught you about where to set the starting address for the DMX address. See how many numbers it takes up, you know. So in my case, my lights took up four. Yours could take up 30, you know, that's possible. One of mine takes up 32. And you just start, you know, start just messing with the faders and you'll understand what they do. And using the knowledge that you gain from this video, you will be able to program lights basically any of them that have a DMX input. Hope that helped you guys out. I will I do, I do, will post links down below to the lights that I personally use to program my light show. Also, don't forget to check out, I did do, uh, you know, when everything was locked down and I didn't have any gigs, I did do a quarantine concert for my original project. I used this uh, where I programmed all the lights in 2020. I did a quarantine concert. So check that out if you're interested in seeing how I've used this knowledge of how to program lights. There will be a link up above and down in the description so you can check it out. Free shameless plug for me and my original music. So thanks for checking it out. So that's basically it. I hope this helped you guys out. If you guys made it to the end of this video, please just do me a favor, hit the like button. I hate asking for it. YouTubers hate asking for it, but it really does help feed the algorithm, recommend my video to more people. If you made it to the end of this video and you at least had like the, oh, I get, I understand how to program lights. Please just do me a favor and just hit the like button. It really does help and allows me to do more of these videos in the future. Again, links are down in the description of the lights that I use to program my lights. Don't forget to check out that video that I mentioned about those wireless dongles for for programming lights, I found it to be insanely helpful. It's definitely worth it, in my opinion, to check those out. Also, check out my video on all about DMXs. I mean, since they discontinued it, I'm I'm really sad they discontinued it because it's such a good program. So I do need to find a new program just, you know, and I'll do another tutorial on a different program. If you guys have any recommendations on the software that you're using, similar to DMXs, where I can send like a MIDI command to load the verse and then send a MIDI command to load the chorus and send another MIDI command to load the guitar solo and stuff like that, please leave a comment down below. I'm definitely interested in checking out new software. So check out some of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages. You can find me at Scott Ewell Music on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I put out new videos. Thank you guys again for watching. Leave a comment with any cool lighting gear you want me to check out. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you next time.